Okay, hello. Technique hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Diamond Mount channel. Now this video is a remix of uh, an old video I made where the sound quality was junk. It was before I had a good camera or a microphone. Um, so this video was filmed on my phone and uh, pitch quality is alright but the sound quality was junk. It's so quiet. So I'm remaking it and uh, I basically edited the, crap, edited the crap out of it. Just cut out loads of chunks because I've got more experience now making videos and I know when I'm editing, editing to cut out things like when I'm waffling on about stuff that's not really relevant to what I'm doing. So this video is making the, the box for your collet for an extra deep stone. Right, you can see on screen now, I am. When you get good at this, got a really I mean, extra deep bit of metal there, which is difficult to bend so without hard, it kinking. Without it twisting, um, like so, half half. got this extra wide pliers, which I recommend you get some. Or well, these were homemade, Rounded just to get to grind screen. down one half of a big pair of old pliers. Bend, slide it up a bit. So the technique is, you got that rounded half of the pliers slide up a bit. Um, towards you. Holding the metal hooked in, keep it nice and straight. Cut a little groove in the in the plier um, grip. And that helps metal not slip out. So I'm talking about how uh, it's it takes a lot of strength, like levering it. Um, but you do it with control, so you move slowly and put your mind into what you're doing. Put your mind into the pliers, if you know what I mean. But then move it along. And ideally you just move it along a little bit and then bend so it a little bit the exactly the same amount every time and you should end up with a nice even curve so i'm just moving along it trying to keep a nice curve Do the same yeah there you go so you your keep looking at your curve yeah, you're making watch out for any little flat so spots while we're on the top tips section um, um looks like i grabbed my two times right. like watchmaker's the eyeglass thing. there so it's just because the, the curvature is a little bit similar to what i'm doing so if you can get something perfectly circular, you can just put it next to what you're hand making and just see see where you're going. So it looks a bit kinked, that looks a bit horrible. Just lots of flat sections. So I know what to do, I know where to put the pliers and then have an idea how much to bend it. And you can, you can very quickly even it all out. Don't ask me why, I turn it up into a full circle, you don't need that much metal ever. Like just half of that is fine. And you go straight down, you imagine the centre. So now I'm talking um, cutting the groove to bend it up. Always go right down. I, I always picture like a T shape from the very top edge going straight down. It should be like a perfect capital letter T. Uh, and then if it was a circle, which that is a circle, um, going down to the centre. And if you follow that rule for every time you cut a corner, then then you should get them all nice and even and all the same. Slightly my tea. When you fold it up. When you folded the whole ah, collet, on, Chris. it's not going to end like that. One end's going to go up. Yeah, just talking about lining it up. Yeah, alright, alright. I think go it's on. quite important to always get that cut nice and straight. I've edited this video and Let's now I'm off. just narrating Keep over it, so I haven't got blade, control to change it. Line, uh, to cross the so, starting it off with my saw blade, it doesn't matter too much where you do the first one there. because uh, you're not starting on a corner anyway. Needle files, one the tri square, the other one the square. So, yeah, I've got two files. The triangle. I go from the saw blade to the tri square file, needle file. Using that edge. Cut that groove in there. Groove in. Again, always keeping it straight. Um, the but then you've got to move on to the square because you need that right angle kind of groove because you're folding the metal up into a right angle. So I almost scratch it along the end of the pliers, uh, sorry, the end of the file. But one. You can see so that. obviously I've done that. I'll skip my bit of the square for some reason. Put the pliers along parallel with the groove. On a big piece of metal like that, yeah, parallel yeah, pliers yeah. are good to hold onto it, and that way you know it's not going to flex at all Same as you bend it. Side. By the way, I filed Watch it down this. about three quarters of the way through the metal, and then I that's bend it much. just that much because I'm I'm scared of the metal silver. cracking. If I keep bending it, there's a chance it might crack on the back of it. So I bend it. Halfway, yeah, bend it that much, about halfway, uh, and flux it, I and then I kneel it, it, and then I uh, bend, it bend it the rest of the way. Up to 90 and even be careful when you're yeah, kneeling so it, because it depends how much you filed through it. Um, you can get a bit of problem of getting too hot on that thin little joint. It's a nightmare if that breaks off. Especially if you, if it comes off, 
and you've only turned up enough metal, you only had enough metal to do it once, you haven't got any extra length to go along a little bit more, uh, you basically got to start again, <laughs> so be careful. So yeah, the first corner is not too important. Uh, I'd recommend going sort of halfway along the stone and then having your first corner, having that kind of distance. So this was difficult to explain at the time, I remember struggling, like I always do. Uh, so I want, I want it to just be disappearing under the girdle of the stone, looking directly down on it. And then hold it in that position, I mark it with a pen, and then sort of look at it again, and then I'll scratch a line on it a little bit more accurately, exactly where I want it, and I'll put a saw cut in it, and I'll check it again, if I need to move it across, left or right, making sure you're going down to right angle, through the centre of the circle, look, which is the same sort of did the other one. Same as before. I marked it, I scored it with a saw blade, and then I'm using my tri square file. About files again, yeah. Dig into it saw blade, tri square, square file, square file. And then put fold it up right halfway. A nice I like to flux it before I kneel it because uh, it's going to be soldered up when it's fully um, fully folded up. Then, uh, you know, it's not all black, you don't have to put any acid. It's all ready to go. Fold it up fully and then solder it. Move on to the next one. So I like However, to, when I've folded it up, I like to solder it and then move on. You don't have to have to do that, but I just like the idea of it being it sort of finished and strong. Be filed flat, so it will allow the stone to sit even lower. So I want mine. I was just talking about, about bearing in mind the stone will sit lower than how you how much you can hold it there, because that top edge is rounded. Uh, that's going to be filed flat, so the stone will sit so down a little bit. Of me looking through the... Um, Looking through the screen on the phone. So, so that metal edge disappears. Congress. Bring the stone up even more. What are we talking about? Thinking about how much of that core I'm going to file away without going all the way through. I want about half. Right, yeah, that half stone that was. Uh, it's not quite emerald cut. The outer corner. But um, the corners are cut right off like an emerald cut. Then, so the corners are going to be taken away. So it's going to sit down lower. So again. I'm considering that with how I position a stone. Because the second the corner you cut is very yeah, important. I'm going to make my next fold from. Okay. Get the distances right is. Sort of it's really hard okay, to do it have. properly to get it really good. Well. So I just my advice is just keep nice. checking, checking, double checking every time you do a little move, uh, like check it. And even if you've you checked it and double checked it and you started filing it, um, there's still an opportunity to move it left or right. Like even when you got if to the square file, you can pull it across a little bit. Down, always file that inner corner off, and then the stone will sit down how you want it to. And obviously you can do that quite severely to get the stone to drop down quite Okay, same again. Put that on there. I've got it sitting where I want so, it. So yeah, I want, I want that so the down, edges are just hidden behind the girdle, but the corners are just peeping out. What's going on with it? That's what I was going for, but that's kind of... soldering up the corners and eventually the last one you're soldering all up together really worth your while using hard solder oh yeah use hard solder this I stage it helps you out in the future but i didn't have any so i just did the whole thing with medium ideally but it's, it's nice if you've got hard solder at this stage and then putting a clause on you've got a little bit less to worry about when you go down to medium the idea is i don't like easy solder i don't think it flows very nicely it just sort of balls up and sits on the surface doesn't seem to flow along where it's meant to Okay, so here's a trick I learned in my previous video. I blue tacked a This was handy with the, um, the front of my phone. doing a video with a smartphone, you can just, uh, with a watchmaker's eyeglass, you can just right, blue tack it onto your phone and it got that like, kind of zoomed in. There's distances, light on it. So this bit, I was going to explain, see the top half, that top surface is rounded, yeah, because it was a rounded bit of metal. That's going to be filed so flat, but there, it kind of causes a bit of a problem side. now because the stone won't drop right so down. Ideally, it just sits there so it if you've done it correctly, it should be sitting, end. sort of balancing <laughs> on that <laughs> topped raised section. Then if you file that away, so all four sides will now. touch at the same time. So very, very important to get this in the correct position. So uh, I like to use my, um, what are they called, digital and calipers. And so really Not for the measurement, but you can just open it up and get those. You've got the two perfect eye. parallel lines, so they help you make sure you're getting everything straight. Dividers or take a measurement and Although I was actually talking about taking measurements there. <laughs> it will help you be confident 
before you cut. But that last one's really important. You can use a set square thing to check your right angles. I just marked my collet and I was about to cut it. I um, I, uh, the last thing. corner, I always um, check it more than I'm checking the other ones. Because if you get it wrong, um, really, trying to replicate that corner to that corner, really obvious. Worry about the inside measurement. So you end up with a sort of trapezoid rather than a uh, really about in the past. than a square or a rectangle. This one's slightly longer than a square. I think I named the video how to make a square four claw collet. It's not a square at all. From corner to corner, and it should the outer edge should line up in a straight line to where you're going to cut. And then I've lost my pen. So yeah, I was putting a saw blade along the outer edge. It gives you an idea where you need to put the corner. If you don't have a permanent marker pen with a fine uh, tip, basically you get a permanent marker pen. Very useful when you're diamond mounting. Um, so yeah, where you're cutting, where your saw cut will be, it goes directly down to the deepest part of your little groove. And obviously, once you've gone to the square file, you end up with a kind of little triangle groove. So that when that folds up 90 degrees, it'll be closed up. When I'm filing down, I'll keep checking it. I keep double checking my measurements. And if I feel it needs to come in a bit more. You can pull the file Yeah, in like I was just saying, you can you can pull it across a little bit. But really angle. check it loads. I saw as much as I can without hitting the other side. Not that, that matters too much because that's all uh, The original video, I just put far too much footage in of me working. It just the, the video is still up on my channel. It's like an hour fifty. I won't do that again. Like like I did with my pendant, Halo pendant. I'll chop it up into like three parts. I'm about to do a three stone ring. Um, that that may possibly be a three parter again. Maybe two. I don't know. That will do. And you do tri square again. So yeah, talking about my needle files. All right, yeah, Chris, you already said that. Man, I was just cutting this video up. I was like editing out like 10, 12 minutes at a time. There was just so much stuff that didn't need to be in there. But if you start a YouTube video, once you've got like a six months, a year's experience, when you go back to your first one, you like kind of cringe because the way you talk, the way you edited it, it all just feels very wrong because you learn so much every time you do it. But it's quite enjoyable. Remember to sort of take a second look back at the whole thing. Do you like where it's going? Are you wandering off your line a little bit? I, I am actually. I'm going to pull it in a little bit. Yeah, I felt like my so we're talking the cut quickly. was out a little bit, so I was decided to pull it across. amount of people that know about this kind of side of making jewellery getting fewer and fewer it's all made in China all done with cats I was just complaining about not enough people how making jewellery anymore all right so Got it in that uh, correct position, I think. Uh, closing it up. I don't try to close it right up, I, and I'll cut it purposely too long. So as I push them down flat, I mean, ideally, you may even open up the other side a little bit. So when they close up flat, it should be perfectly nice, perfect join. But maybe not quite going flat enough. So then you just cut cut through it with a saw blade, and then it, maybe you have to do that two or three times, and then it should just finish up really. A nice tight join and then perfectly straight. And then cut this through. So this stage work push that down. really thoughtfully, uh, really carefully. Slightly too big, so it's really squeezing in there. And then I'm going to. It's nice that joins right in the middle as well, because that's where a shank will go. Flat together, and then solder it up. If it's going to be cast, doesn't matter too much, but you may as well practice doing it for not casting. And this is really, is a really deep stone. I mean that that bit of metal's. Too deep, really, but I was kind of proving a point that it can be done at any sort of silly depth. Just 
washing it down, see now it's just too big. I might force it in there and then it's gonna pop. Yeah, I think I said I was gonna force it flat, what which will push it all out of shape, I'm but then by it as I'm cutting it, so filing, the saw uh, sawing through the join it's should uh, close it all up again. But it's difficult when you've got, got two bits of metal pressuring against the into the join and you put your saw blade through it. It grips it, gets really hard, you've got to keep going. If you stop yeah, and start, really it's uh, never really worked out very nicely. With a squeeze, which I'll be holding it together like that when I'm soldering it. It should measure up quite good. So you've got your collet, you're happy with it. You've finished uh, it looks like I've soldered it up. Your measurements and your um, good. Next stage, we're moving on to filing. So to we'll file it up a little head. bit. I like using a nice coarse file. Just hacks into the metal really fast. Right. So I'm going to flatten it a bit more, but just to double check. Oh, I've taken the top off already. So yeah, it's flat now on top. I Again, be careful with it though. You don't go too like far line, or work too fast because it's you've made it. That top edge is what you've gauged the, the, the fitment of the stone, so you can't you can take it down too much, obviously, because it's tapered. You it take too much off, you're making it smaller. Next, on the sides, again, secure it against your peg. Filing it evenly across the surface, top to bottom. Not just make sure your file is nice and flat on it, there. sort of cutting from the top to the bottom at the same time. So you're not changing the angles. I mean, you do have the ability to change the angles if you need to. If you don't like what you've made slightly, you can fake it a little bit to okay, get it perfectly straight. Opposite sides now. now this but obviously, if you're doing that, you're making either the top or the bottom thinner at the angle you're pushing it. So you can make it look odd in the future if you do too much like that. Ideally, just make it properly. <laughs> I think I've got that right angle now. Here we go, it's pretty good. This is pretty good, not perfect. No, when, you, when you're checking your angles, be really okay, critical on yourself. Fun. Be your own worst critic. And if you don't like it, yep. make an adjustment. Okay. Don't be like, oh yeah, that's good, that's good. Actually, okay. actually look and try and find faults. I'm sitting up a bit high. I've got my proportions quite good. I can just see the corners peeping out. Over the stone. Next thing. I mean, our stone sticks up so high. How it's going to sit when it's set. So, so I took out a little metal from the inside gap. to get it down. It's got a bit of a belly on it sticking there. Use your ten times loop. All I'm stones, yeah. It all the way around. See where the stone is touching. The, the cut a bit gap. odd underneath. So you have to really specifically make your collet for so the stone. That stone had a kind of belly. It was like bulging the on the sides, the longer sides. So I cut loads secure, of metal out in the middle of the longer safer, sides like and then it dropped right down. Break or shift. If it gets knocked, it'd be a much more if it fits perfectly, you'll have a really well set stone. It'll be easy to set, much less likely to rock about. No vibrations, no twisting, which means it's more secure in the ring. A lot less likely to break if it gets knocked. Uh, just more secure, obviously, it's gonna, it's gonna stay in there. Put tools in your skin. Okay, now that feels much more solid, it's not rocking about like it was. When I start cutting out the inside of collets, to be specific for a stone, I always mark the stone with a marker pen and the collet somewhere where it's not going to rub off on my hands. Uh, and that way, when you're putting the stone on and taking it off, you can always be confident you're putting it the same way around every time. A piece of it does, even though they might look identical, like the sym symmetry of the cut of the stone, they're not always fit the same. I might go down a little bit lower. Another explanation I would like to say. Earlier on, I mentioned marking one side of your stone and one side of the yeah, just said that. So when you're putting so yeah, I'm talking about marking the side of the stone, I think. You can always be confident you're putting it in the same position. Right, if I turn this around... Ah, 
Ah. Put it through the city there nicely. It's got a bit of a wobble. So yeah, I, I turned it around on purpose and had a bit of wobble. Which I do sometimes, just to double check. Uh, nice. Yeah, and it was definitely nice much solid, better solid in the position, in the way I cut it. Next, I'm taking my paper disc. Paper disc in the sides. Get the file yeah, marks outside. I use buff stick, but basically. paper disc are really quick and this. accurate. You want to buff lines opposite to what you're about to use your dividers for. So, yeah, I'm going to mark out where the daylight hole is going to go. So it's nice if you can get buff lines in it. Once you've got the scratches out, uh, you can just go over it really quickly with a buff stick and uh, get, get the lines, the brush lines, kind of going the opposite way to where the dividers are going to run along it, parallel to the top and bottom. So you can really gently score it with your dividers and you can see the line very easily because it's going against the, the sort of brushed lines on there. I use paper discs a lot. Um, they're useful. They've got a lot of applications making jewellery. I'll be using this one a lot. Bring it up in the bottom. Obviously you're adjusting. Any any adjustments after this stage, if you want to bring it up more, always do it from the bottom because remember the top is made specifically to sit the stone think you're it. Call it is also, too deep. One thing I'm considering Only file it up from the bottom. Don't wide. adjust the top anymore. File that finger size in it. It's going to sit on the finger. And remember, if it's going to be a ring, so uh, you're going to have that rounded scoop out of the bottom. So you lose a little bit of height because off the bottom. Wide, go up. So make sure your so culé colour, culé point, too deep. tip, whatever you want to call it, of the stone isn't going to stick out after that's been filed in there. Like it's nice to, if you're doing a casting. It's nice to leave it too deep on purpose. It gives you a bit of uh, halfway, bit of leeway, a bit of space low, to file it differently halfway. for different people's rings. But, uh, you need to consider, you know, this. I think what was I all about here? I was talking about the design this of it. This narrower end is going to have that filed in. It goes here. I prefer daylight, sort of towards the bottom, the bottom half. So your finger goes. This finger looks way. a bit more elegant. So this is going to be filed up, like I mentioned, because this is so wide, to get it nice and neat from corner to corner, it's going to have to come up quite a long way. So, but thing. obviously don't go down too low, where nice after you've filed that moment. finger size in it, it's so going to have really, going to be really thin on the ends. To draw lines on it, I just use a fine line and marker pen. So you can just use a marker pen and actually just draw what you're planning on cutting out, to see how you think it looks. Too metallic, too thick. It'll but you find you, you have a sort of style that you work to, and then you just kind of know what you want, the look you want next time. Quite a wide gap down the centre. So yeah, there you go. I think I started halfway and then coloured in a little line, thick line underneath the halfway mark, bottom half. Just go all the way around it. Score these on. Down. I really like because I've got the buff lines going the opposite direction. And this is tricky. You need to be thinking about the this is kind of a, the edge that you're not looking at while you're looking at <laughs> the bit you're looking at. That makes sense. You're watching watching where you normally look, but then you've got to keep in mind what the saw blade's doing in the other corner. Well, even beginners will be welcome the inside of the other line. Okay, I'll show you a close up. So I cut down my pallet. See my two lines. Inside my two lines, up, obviously. Line. And then down there, up to the line. Do you know what I mean? You can so cut along two, that top one, space. and then the saw blade could be going out of that space where you wanted it to be. The, blade the other side. Put it up into the so you've got to take your time, move, move along a bit slowly with this. Zooming it up and down, and we're putting a edge on there, so we get like a little blade. Sharpening my paper disc, it's a good trick, so if you don't know sharp. about that. And now, that's a good tool you to use to put in now there. I, now it fits in there nicely. And the paper discs are really good for getting the... This cuts very slowly, so it's a nice gentle tool to use. Getting nice flat, flat sides you can in your daylight hole. make a mistake if you're not careful. So, we're cutting here, but I'm also thinking about the other end. I don't want to be... Yeah, you still got to be careful with your angles I'm talking about. 
making mistakes where I'm not looking. So we can do is straighten it out Obviously which makes the daylight tired. much much wider might yeah, not have been the look you want knows is how my stone it well before I think it sits up really high I'm gonna I'm gonna cut out this edge yeah it's still sitting up high down. but you can see the stone through my daylight hole but yeah with the daylight hole you can see gives you another little angle to see the stone see how far it's going down into it I was literally just using ball phrases to grind it out. I looked around it with a ten times loop, see where the stone is touching, and then just grind that out. And it should uh, drop down a bit more. I've been taking away all that. I just went up and down. I did most of it, well, I did all of it with a ball So this frame. video is literally just line. doing this box part. Just so there wasn't any loop. Getting a stone to fit, so cutting a daylight hole. And what I would yeah, do after this, I'd put the... Really See, I've only done half that daylight hole, yeah, one half. Like, put the two claws on, make sure they're soldered on really well, top and bottom. And then uh, then you can cut the other half of the daylight hole, because it's joined together by the claws. And then put the last two claws on. That's how I proceed. to be too thin, because it's going to be cast, and after casting, you have to buff the sides yeah. and polish, so... Consider casting, things shrink as well, and you need more filing. ...comes in as well, which will make that even thinner. Oh, ended. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Not all my videos are going to be a bit weird like this. Um, stay tuned. Planning on doing... Uh, got a few new ideas for the channel. I'm doing some more shows. One's called That Skull Ring. The other one's called Designing from Inspiration, where I go out and I find things and then we, like, just random stuff out on the streets and then we turn the design of that into a piece of jewellery that's going to be good and that's going to be an ongoing thing so I've got loads of ideas for that and before I do that what am I doing? oh that three stone yeah I've got stones on my bench ready to go so this week I've been doing customer stuff uh, next week I think Friday tomorrow I've got all day I've got a day off work so I've got a free day I'll finish the customer stuff and then Saturday I will start doing YouTube stuff again thanks for watching see you next time bye